Next Level Board Gaming. Hi guys, it's Nick from Next Level Board Gaming. And we have a new project. It's not really new actually. It's, uh, it's our version Blood Rage 3D 2.0. Why did I build another 3D board for Blood Raids? That's a good question. The Kickstarter of Blood Raids uh, arrived uh, some time ago. And thanks to the Kickstarter, I was, uh, yeah, of course, playing the game again since a very long time. I've not played it for, uh, for a longer time. And the Kickstarter monsters, uh, they were super cool, uh, super nice. Some new uh, new pillage tokens who look very nice, and it brought it brought me back to the game, and all of us played it again, and eventually we realized again that Blood Rage still is one of my best games ever, and yeah, the big board was uh, was very uh, was was very cool. It still is uh, yeah, very beautiful uh, to look at. It's still uh, good to play on. But now as I have evolved and I became better in uh, 3D modeling, I thought it was uh, time because we got a lot of questions from people like if we can make a 3D board for other people and it's really not affordable, it's really not doable. It's, it's, it's almost impossible for the time that it takes to build such a thing. So, uh, yeah, I decided to make it now more accessible to people to do it for yourself because we have the complete geek gaming range now and it is it's it's, it's a very good product uh, I love it uh, especially the base ready ranges um, for example if you look here if you take one of the tiles off it is completely 3d printed it's a beautiful shell and it is done with scrub lens is just seriously one base ready product so you slap on a crap load of PVA glue throw over that the scrub lens and immediately you have a very cool finish as you could see the Ragnarok tiles themselves everything is more yeah more tight more streamlined everything fits nicely on the table it's not that huge not that humongous for Yggdrasil I thought it was very cool of course the tree itself I got the idea from the from the digital digital game and now it's like a burnt pillar tree all the rune stones are hanging here like you see in the video game so now it's not pillaged, and if you do pillage it, you take up, uh, take out the crown of uh, Yggdrasil. I thought it was a cool, uh, cool gimmick to do. So uh, yes, this is made to do it yourself at your home. The STL files are available. We will make a total package, a blood race package, uh, to build this whole table yourself. The video is not too long, it's like 14 to 15 minutes. That also shows how easy it to, is to build it yourself. And for me, it took me, after the printing was done, it took me maybe one weekend, like a Saturday and a Sunday evening. And that's it. A whole Saturday, a Sunday evening, and it was done. Quickly as that. Let it dry. Um, yeah. What you don't see in the video after this is uh, that I use mud sealant spray after every step of every basing. Um, I thought it was not necessary to, uh, to show it every time again and again, but remember, just use the mud sealant spray after, every, after everything you do, after every step you take. It seals it off tightly and perfect, and it makes it rock hard, it makes it solid, playable. And this is very durable. I use a little bit of a of a of a sticky uh, yeah how do you call it kneed kneaded kneed gum and I put like one little dab under Yggdrasil and the board stays solidly in place. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you after this. 
All right, so uh, after the 3D printing is done, we are going to uh, put modeling compound in the Ragnarok tiles, in the Ragnarok uh, bases. And it has a nice little ridge to catch the modeling compound. The modeling compound, if you don't smooth it too much, it will immediately create a very nice lava effect. So that's done. And now here I'm uh, going to show you two ways how to paint the Ragnarok. The first one is with a sponge, as you can see. Quite easy, just go over it, dab it. Just very natural ways of, uh, of trying to create lava effects with some white, yellow and red. And after this, we're gonna show you how to do it with the airbrush. Of course, the airbrush gives a finer look, gives a nicer end result. But uh, hey, if you don't have an airbrush, you can still make things nice in a very easy way. So here we go with the airbrush. Just some reds, blend it in with some yellows and then highlight it with a very fine bright yellow. Just some spots and dots. You're going, going to go over it with the sponge again, with the black, and it's gonna look very cool. Super easy, super quick. Ready in no time. So just with a super glue gel, you glue everything together that needs to be glued. Do with a gel type of super glue because otherwise other super glues doesn't uh, will not stick to PLA. So that's uh, that's a little tip for you. And here we are using using the Geek Gaming base ready, the, the basing glue. It's a very, very tacky glue. Very smooth glue as well. And we smear it out and then we have these very nice little clear acrylic boxes that will fit one complete bag of uh, base ready range. It's very nice because uh, you can just take off the sticker, put it on the case and you don't have to uh, worry with those uh, baggies anymore and they are reusable. So with the Jotunheim province I wanted to create a little bit of a mountain range. So uh, we use the mountain uh, base ready range together with the, with the snow range and keep the center point as mountain-ish and then uh, flock the rest with, uh, with snow powder 
And remember, I flocked this twice. So this is gonna be sealed later on with uh, mod sealant. And then did it do it again. Of course, before you use the mud sealant spray, clean up first all the things that you don't want the snow to be on, because it's gonna be sticking there, and you're going to lose your uh, your things that you don't want to be losing. So now it's ready. Let it dry. Seal it, let it dry, and then do it again. Here we are doing some dry brushing, just to uh, get it a little bit more white, highlighted whites. But also the base ready range of the mountain pass, it has some uh, colored stones in it. And some of the colored stones were some reddish color. They bleeded a little bit with, uh, with the mud sealant spray. It was not big of a deal, but uh, just for you to know. And you can obscure it with the, with the dry brush. And here we use the base ready wasteland soil. Again, it's just one base ready range. Just slap it on there and it's gonna be done in no time. And in the last provinces we use the base ready scrublands, very uh, popular base ready, it's also just very beautiful. So now we are going over to the sides, all the, the edges, the, you want to have the, the Ragnarok tiles when you take one province out of it, you want to have the, the shine of the, of the lava to be reflected on the sides. For Yggdrasil we have Mediterranean soil, it was a difficult decision but eventually I'm very happy with it. Against all the other provinces the Mediterranean soil gives a very light look. Uh, do remember I did base this one three times, it gives a much different uh, texture, it gives a much fuller yeah, show when it's based three times. So gives a much different look to it. So flocking this one three times guys. And here I am uh, actually uh, doing picking up a new uh, craftsman, uh, craftsman ID. I couldn't get Yggdrasil to look the way I wanted to look. So I uh, got some modeling clay and start modeling Yggdrasil. And you see here my two children. They are helping Papa very much, of course, having a lot of fun. So uh, eventually uh, these models that were uh, handcrafted with, uh, with clay, I scanned them with my telephone and then modeled them a little bit extra in the, in the computer. And eventually there is the 3D printed file of Yggdrasil and uh, the core of Yggdrasil should look like a little bit in the in the video game and the digital game of Blood Rage, like it's uh, it's some kind of a rune stone there or some kind of a magical stone inside. 
or amber that gives light and Yggdrasil is growing around it. So uh, then just uh, the branches of Yggdrasil and all the, the trunk of Yggdrasil we just coat it very simply with, an, uh, with a contrast wild wood and then after that you just highlight some edges that you like to highlight. The top of Yggdrasil is gonna be done black with black templar and a simple dry brush. It will give a burned effect. I thought it was cool to uh, take off the crown of Yggdrasil when it's pillaged and show in that way that Yggdrasil is pillaged so you have more uh, connection to the board. It's, uh, it's more playable uh, with uh, you're actually doing something else with the board. So I uh, thought it was a cool idea to do it this way. So there inside the crown of Yggdrasil you have uh, raised platforms that will uh, yeah, connect to, uh, to the trees, to the branches of Yggdrasil. And what we are going to do now is we take some moss, some, uh, some tree foliage and we are going to uh, stick it all around, seal it down with mud sealant spray a lot, just really soak it guys, it's, it's, it's necessary to completely soak it with mud sealant afterwards. And then we uh, flock it a little bit with uh, foam flock, just to give it a little bit more life, uh, it's like, like it's more leaves on it, that it's not just, just mossy. It, and eventually it's a, it's a playable piece. It will get very solid, very hard, and you can use it. And I thought it was a, a simple but good idea to build Yggdrasil that is possible to take away and pick up and drop down with no uh, worries to break something. Then some uh, mid green and eventually some light green foam flock. I will throw it through the sieve so uh, it distributes a little bit better. And there you have it. In my opinion it's a beautiful uh, crown for Yggdrasil. But keep in mind what it was necessary to be doing is to be playable. You need to take it up, pick it up and put it away without breaking some branches or whatever. So uh, this was the best solution that I uh, could come up with. And then the last part, the rune stones is definitely from the digital Blood Rage game. I thought it was a super cool idea to do it this way. And that's it guys. Simple as that, easy as that. Your Blood Rage board is finished. And this is eventually the result. Alright, so that was the build of Blood Rage. As you have seen, it was a very short, quick video. Everything is super easy. The only thing you basically have to do is to print it out, smash it full of, full of glue, slap on the base ready products, the base ready ranges. Um, I have base readied everything. I flocked and I base ready everything two or three times. You don't see it in the videos, but as I have explained in the videos, um, for example, uh, with, uh, with Gimmel or something, with the scrub lens, just put basing glue on it, seal it down with mud sealant spray, let it dry, and then the next day on Sunday, I sprayed it again with mud sealant glue, put another base ready scrub lens on it, and let it dry again, and that's, that's the finish. 
it gives a much more full texture, a much more full uh, base. You do get some bevels uh, here and there. Uh, looks much better. I eventually also put on some uh, some tufts in the end. Uh, you can go wild, make it the way you want to do it. So uh, please like and subscribe. It is really really nice to uh, to get your guy to get you guys uh, the, to get the feedback of you guys. There are some more projects coming up this winter. As we have said, in winter we are more active. Uh, we have more time to build all of these things. So uh, stay tuned. Um, please let us know uh, in the comments what you think of this uh, of this version of Blood Rage. Did you like the other version more, or do you like this one better? How do you think it looks? Um, even more important is the looks of the end result more important, or is the setup and the compatibility with the game itself more important? Like this is set it up much more quicker it's the same table size the other one you need a bigger table you have a bigger footprint on your table so uh, do you like this project that we 3d print as much as possible for the 3d boards and then it's more accessible and easy for you guys to build at home or do you prefer to see crazy full out builds like we did in the past um, yeah please let me know in the comments and uh, let me know if you if you like it Helps a lot to, uh, to keep me going and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.